Well, good morning, everybody. My name is Isabella Henman, and you are at Student Hub Live. And I understand there's lots and lots of brand new students, which is absolutely wonderful. So this is our first Student Hub Live session of the new year in terms of the live broadcasts. So Student Hub Live is about community building. It's about bringing students together, talking about different skills, welcoming you to the university and getting you kicked off on the fabulous new journey you have of your study journey with the Open University. So we know that many of you are brand new, which is why we're doing these freshers events. We are just like any other university that has freshers, although possibly slightly less of the going out on the River Thames and getting drunk, which was what my original freshers week was. I didn't get drunk, I'd just like to point that one out, but everybody else did, uh, but we'll, we'll move on for that one. But so what we're doing today is these live broadcasts. So you can see me, you can hear me, you'll be able to hear my guests. Nobody can hear anything you're saying at home, but you can interact as much as you like in the chat box. And I know lots Lots of people have already. There's also a number of different widgets which are basically little images or different things which give information about you. So there is instructions there and we've got a number of different people that are helping you out today. So we have got Heidi, we've got Joanne, we've got Pete and we've got Mark who are in the chat box. So they are answering different questions, they've got different specialities so you may find some of them asking some specific questions. One of the things I'm going to say right up front before I go to Heidi is that I know you're all incredibly excited to get started. Most of you won't have an allocated tutor as yet. Now, I happen to be a tutor as well, and I know that tutor allocation will be happening later this week. There is probably going to be a little tiny bit of a delay compared to what it normally is because of what's been happening in the UK recently. But most of you will probably get a tutor towards the end of this week. So don't panic if you haven't got a tutor yet. You've probably got access to your module website nice and early so you can have a look around. And you might have access to things like welcome forums and information like that which will explain. But don't worry, please don't worry if you haven't heard from a tutor yet because you, it isn't expected that you will. So I thought I'd say that up front because remember most modules begin on the 1st or the 8th of October so whilst you're incredibly enthusiastic and want to get going you don't necessarily need to quite yet. Right so I mentioned that we've got Heidi in our chat pod. So Heidi what have people been talking about today? Well, it's so busy already on the chat and it is just so fantastic to have so many people with us. And I must say, it's such a pleasure for me to be here because I have been an OU student myself. I studied with the OU for five years and absolutely loved it. So all those perhaps initial feelings of trepidation or apprehension that you may be feeling, let me reassure you, you are about to embark on an amazing adventure. You've made a wonderful decision coming to study with us at the OU. So I want to say some hellos to people in the chat. We've got Demelza, who's joining us from Chigwell, Nicola in Essex, Gwen is joining us from Folkestone. We've got a great number of people that are joining us from Scotland, which is wonderful. We've got Carol, Jesse, and Helen. We've also got David, who is starting a BA in Childhood and Youth Studies this year, and it's his first time studying with the OU. So welcome, David. Wonderful to have you with us. We've also got Laura, who's on the Suffolk and Norfolk border, and she's really excited to start studying psychology. And then nearby, we've got Sabina, um, who is from Norwich. So wonderful to have so many people with us today. We've also got some returning students as well. Um, so Sarah's starting her last level two modu module um, in data analysis. Um, and she says she always finds that the Freshers events kickstart her engagement in learning, which is great. And then Melissa is in her fourth year of computing and is joining us from Lincolnshire. So great to have you with us. And I must mention, we need to speak a bit quietly because Sean's joining us from Nottinghamshire and she's got her little baby with her who's sleeping at the moment. So we can't make too much noise. Ah, oh, okay. I can't guarantee that because if I get the giggles, I don't always giggle quietly. And unfortunately, I am known for getting the giggles in sense. So it's lovely to have people. I'm particularly excited to know there's lots of people from Scotland. I do love Scotland. In fact, I, I had a little memory images about being in Scotland two years ago, um, which was my last time there. Obviously, I haven't travelled that much recently. So one of the things that we've got to start you off is we did want one of the uh, we wanted the vice deputy vice chancellor or various people they're important terms we won't worry about what they mean because i don't even understand myself but we have got a welcome video from you which liz mark one of our colleagues in the university who unfortunately wasn't able to be with us today but she's recorded a welcome video saying how important she feels it is to welcome you even though she was double booked so we've got that video coming up for you now Hello everybody, my name is Liz Ma and I'm Pro Vice Chancellor of Students at the Open University. 
I'm really pleased to be able to welcome you to this Student Hub Live event and sorry that I can't be with you as it's always an event that I enjoy part participating in and I'm hoping that you're going to have a fabulous time today. I'm, my role is to ensure that you as students achieve the outcomes that you want, that you enjoy yourself while you're doing it, that you're satisfied with your experience and to help you really in any way that I can and my team can to make sure that what you expected is what you will get. Many of you will be feeling a little bit anxious, a little bit nervous, and that's normal. The secret is to not keep it to yourself, to remember first of all that everybody else will be feeling the same way, and not be afraid to speak out. So you can ask your peers, you can ask people questions and talk to each other during this event today, but you can also talk to your student support team, you can talk talk to your associate lecturer, you can even talk to me if you would like to, because I'm there for you. I want you all to enjoy your experience studying with us, and I want you most of all to make sure that you achieve the outcomes that you set out to. For some of you that will be a full degree, for some of you it might be an interim qualification like a certificate of higher education, for some of you, you might, just want, you might just be here to put your toe in the water to see what it's like to study with us. You're all welcome, you all matter, and we care very much about all of you. So I hope you have a fantastic time, enjoy yourselves today, and enjoy yourselves with your studies, and good luck to all of you. Well, that was brilliant. That was so nice to get Liz's introduction there and she said about how special everybody is and it's one of the things that we talk about quite a lot in student hub live you have a study journey and it is your study journey uh, it's something i bang on about quite a lot as a matter of fact your study journey is what you are wanting to get out of it now we'll give you lots of different ideas we'll give you suggestions but remember to stop and think about what you're wanting to do remember your special remember community remember communication as I said earlier, one of the things about Student Hub Live is about the building community, as well as giving you some information about what you're experiencing. So I have my first two guests here today, which is lovely, and I've got Zoe and I've got Urte. So Zoe is from one of our technical teams and Urte is from our library team. So first of all, Zoe, I'm gonna to come to you. We've got lots of brand new students here, as we've already mentioned. I think we've got 72 people, 72% 72 of people that are brand new to study, which is lovely. They're probably thinking, Thinking, there's loads to be looking at there's lots to be looking at. where do they start can you give them some ideas about what's the first thing they should be looking for sure I think that's a really good question hi everyone so as Isabella said I'm Zoe Gibson I'm responsible for online rooms at the Open University which is um, really how you get to your online tutorials but in terms of just where you start uh, my advice would be student home is a really good place to start um, you'll all have access to that you can find all the information you need not only for links to your module website but also um, how you can book on your tutorials, access to your tutor and general guidance around study skills and, and everything else that goes with the Open University. So that would be my, my first starting point. So that's the student home, which is a term that we'll find yeah. that students will see quite often, isn't it? And you get used to that. So student home, as literally, it's the home place for the students with lots of things. I'm just going to mention one thing. You mentioned tutorials. I know you're going to explain a little bit mm. about the technicalities, but that links to this tutor group allocation thing. So don't worry if you can't book on tutorials yet when you're looking. Yeah. It might be you can't do that until you've got a tutor allocation. Because I know for myself, whilst I know which ones I'm supposed to be doing, I've got absolutely no idea who's going to be on them because I don't have any students <laughs> there. So you've mentioned that kind of thing. So it sounds quite complicated. You mentioned things like look, booking on, you mentioned uh, online rooms, you mentioned student home, you mentioned your module website. So what makes it easy for people to find their way around? How are students going to know how to find their way around? So they'll be able to find their way around because Student Home gives them only the links they need. So you don't get a link to every single module. That would be um, too overwhelming. So you'll only get links to the things that you're registered on. So you'll be able to go straight to your module website. The links to your module website, that's where 
all of your study takes place. You don't need to really remember anything else for your study, apart from you can bookmark that module website so that you can go to it direct and not don't have to always go to student home. On your module website, you will see that it's been designed in a way so that it really gives you the information that you need. The home page of every module website has a study planner and that study planner will be divided into topics and probably weeks and it will handhold you through what you're meant to do each week. Under each week or, or a section, depending on, on the study that you're doing, it will give you the links to the things you're meant to be, maybe be reading, uh, looking at, things that you're meant to be engaging with. And that's really important. And as you go through, you can then tick off the things that you've done. So you've got a checklist of what you have done. And everything is there to help you and, and handhold you through. So there's no surprises. Um, and everything is there to make sure that you get what you need. And then, of course, beyond that, there might be other things like booking on tutorials, which I know we can talk about um, as the conversation moves along. Yeah. So you mentioned that checking off bit. It's one of my favourite parts about the module website. Yeah. And literally, there's a little bu button. Well, it's not a button, is it? It's a little round dot and you do it and it it's, ticks off. And then there's, that, that's right. there's a tracker across the top and it says, whoa, I'm 12% through now. Oh, I'm 43% through. Yeah. I love it. I'm a small child like that because it's like pressing buttons. And, and for me, ticking that off, it really helps me. But just... We know some people might feel a bit anxious about that. It's not there to make people feel anxious, is it, Zoe? It's there to make no. them feel, feel in control. Absolutely. This is all about giving you the control. And, you know, there are going to be some points where you may be a little bit ahead and somewhere you may be a little bit behind. But that's OK. You have... Um, enough time to complete everything. You know, Isabel has mentioned the little progress bar across the top. Other things that are on the module website, there are, each page can be bookmarked. So you can start to create your own personalized study journey on your module. So everything that you maybe want to bookmark, or it could be that you're bookmarking it because you want to remind yourself that that's where you've got up to in your reading or, yeah. or your activities. But this is about giving you the freedom and the flexibility to study it at, at your pace, really. At time that's Absolutely. convenient for you yeah and that's the good thing about it we probably ought to mention now we're talking about online modules some students may have printed books but a lot of modules are online and even if you do have a printed book you will have an online version of it as well won't you Zoe <laughs> Yeah, that's absolutely right. That's a really good point. So some of you may have books um, and and that, and it's the same principle. So your module website will still steer you through, it will handhold you. So it will say, OK, so now you need to read pages X to Y. And then we come back to the module website and there might be a little quiz or it might be that there's a little online activity to do or something. And then it will take you through that, make help you reflect on what you've learnt and then go on to the next piece. So exactly the same principle, whether you have a book or your material is all online, um, it's a guided study and it's a way to help you break down that content so that you're not, you've not got massive chunks to learn all in one go. Um, and it's broken down in a way where you get chance to reflect, think about what you've read, maybe even chat with your peers in a forum, or it might be, you know, that you've booked on a tutorial and then you'll be going in and you can meet your peers and your tutor and chat about something and and allowing you to engage in those conversations because part of your study is you may be perfectly happy studying on your own and you, you do it and you don't need anything more. But it might be that for some, you want to engage in the forums, you want to sort of learn from each other, ask those questions, see how other people interpreted that particular para a tricky paragraph, for example. Mm -hmm. and, and all of that content is on your module website in a, in a safe and secure space. Yeah, so that's a really useful thing. And we're getting quite a lot of love coming through for the tick boxes and the, and the progress bars. <laughs> and Kelly says it's so satisfying clicking the complete button. And Katya says it makes you feel like you're accompanying something. And Alison just says she loves the tick boxes. Oh, we've actually just had an interesting question through. It's a little bit different, but there's a, Jamie wants to know how do holidays work and how do set holidays work? Because we haven't specifically mentioned that. But that's actually a really good question to start with, isn't it, Zoe? 
Yeah, that is a really good one. Um, I think for the most part, if there's any holidays, any set holidays, for a good one is really Christmas, is yeah. that there's normally a Christmas break and and that will be put into the study calendar and it will normally say that, that this is a Christmas break. Um, another good one is usually the Easter break. I think there's sometimes a break there as well. But there your is. study calendar will say that very specifically. Yeah. Um, and then... In that time, there might be some study that you need to do, depending on where you are on your own journey um, for that particular piece of work. But um, you, it will say whether there's a break or not. And usually in that period, um, there's not normally much going on, is there? There's normally time yeah. just to, to, to have a break. Yeah. So so what happens is on we've been talking about the electronic calendar, which is the first thing you look mm. at on your module page. But you will also find you can download one that you can print off. And I have to say you can't see them, but mine are stuck up on my wall behind me here. <laughs> and I find them really useful because I can glance at it and go, right, I know what my access students are going to be doing this week. I'll, I know what my level one students are going to be doing this week. And it literally says on it. This week, this is the week number. This is the date. This is what you should be studying. Zoe mentioned flexibility. It's not like somebody's going to be saying, if you haven't studied this, you're really, really naughty. But this is helping you work your way through. Mm. And yes, and I can see 24th of the week beginning the 24th of January, the week beginning 6th of sorry, 24th of December. I think you think I'll be able to read by now. And the 6th of January, winter break, no study. Um, and I know if I flick the paper over, which means everything will fall off, um, I know there is one for Easter. But it's not, it's not like school where you have half terms off and you have things like that. So it might be actually very realistically, you know that you can't study at a particular time. We talk about time management in other sessions, but sometimes it's quite a good idea sometimes to step back a little bit and go, right, let's have a look overall. But that's that's a bit of a difference. But yeah, there aren't there are set holidays in terms of no study. And some some modules will have a TMA break week and it just says all you need to do is finish the TMA this week based on activities. But we've mentioned a few different things there. And I just wanted to pick up something you mentioned earlier, Zoe. You mentioned about forums and about building community. Now, Student Hub Live is about building community. So how do students actually communicate with other students on their module? How is that possible? Yeah, OK. So there are various ways. But the, the, uh, on every module, there will always be forums. So that's an online space where you can type a question, say hi, um, share your thoughts. And that will be done in a very managed way. So you may have forums that are for your own tutor group or you may have forums for the whole module and your, the module team may um, post in there too and you can post back to them or your tutor may post in there and you can post back to them. Uh, but it's your space. It's for you to ask the questions and, and really you will get out of it what you put in. And don't be afraid to ask those questions. I think, you know, my advice is that, you know, I, I was when I was a student, of course, you're nervous. You don't want to be the first one to ask that question and or look silly or, or anything else. But I can guarantee you most people will be probably thinking similar or be very relieved that somebody has broken the ice and <laughs> typed something in the forum. Um, you know, ask those questions. Be that one. Be the bold one, the brave one, because I can guarantee you you'll be thanked um, and it's a really nice space it's a, a really great way to build up community and remember it's a really safe and secure space so not everybody can read that forum only the people in the group that it's for can read it so like I said that could be your tutor group or at the most it's going to be the people that are on that module studying along with you and just be brave post yeah. and be kind as well so you know be uh, be kind and respectful that that would be my yeah. advice for the forums but they're a really yeah. great space yeah and in fact we've got another session um session two of our freshers week uh, offerings which is on thursday we're actually going to be talking about forums we've got somebody who, from a module team talking about welcome forums and that kind of thing and a tutor so we will we'll cover more about that on thursday not that we don't want to talk about it today because obviously we're answering questions but that's quite important now i I'm keep giving you lots of questions sorry because they keep coming in but we've also been asked about tutorials and how important tutorials are now i know the reason i know zoe well is 
is because Zoe and I chat about tutorials and how they work and also Student Hub Live quite a lot. And I am actually that person that asks Zoe the question. <laughs> I'm the one that goes, hello, what's that, what's that? So she's used to me being, and she goes, oh no, hooray, there's another email from Isabella asking something. But yeah, tutorials are a really good way of engaging. Now we will talk more about tutorials in the session on Thursday, but Zoe, you are also responsible. You mentioned our online rooms earlier. So you're sort of yeah. in charge of our online rooms, which is where tutorials are. Can you tell us a little bit about what we mean by that and how important tutorials are? Yeah, absolutely. So um, what we mean by that is that a lot of our tutorials are provided online and that allows you to join your tutorials, no matter where you are, what you're doing. You might be traveling home from work. Uh, you might be fitting it in between your childcare or other responsibilities. Um, so super important that you do engage with your tutorials for many reasons. So um, your tutorials are going to be your, your main opportunity to have that live interaction with not just your tutors, but also with your fellow students on your module. It's a really great opportunity for you to meet other people and to engage in the content. And again, very similar to what I said about forums, you know, about being bold and brave and just asking those questions. Or if you don't feel comfortable asking those questions, going along and listening and really learning from others. I know that personally, I learn best by listening to others. Um, sometimes the way I might interpret things is OK. But it's only by having those other viewpoints that you really get that understanding, that deeper understanding of a, a particularly tricky problem. So your tutorials are there for you to book on. Um, and you, again, the study, it's within your own time. So the tutorials, they're normally, there'll be a, a variety of dates and times for you to book on for the majority of your tutorials. Some will be recorded so that if you can't attend, you can watch the recording later. And others are not recorded to provide that space for those that don't like to be recorded. Now, I appreciate I've said a lot there. And I think what I do <laughs> want to say is that um, you should never feel um, anxious about contributing in your tutorials. As with everything on our modules, they are safe and secure spaces. Not anyone can join. Majority of your tutorials will be probably maximum 20 people. Sometimes yeah. there may be a few more in there, but they're, they're safe spaces to ask those questions. And I'll just pause for a moment in case that there's any questions <laughs> or anything needs picking up because I may have put yeah. a lot in there. Yeah, well, actually, I think you've actually answered most of the questions because we were being asked, were they specific times? We were being asked, are they recorded? You answered both of those. We were, being, we were asked whether or not they're important for TMAs. You didn't specifically mention that. Oh, and we've got we've we've got acronym bingo there. We've mentioned TMAs, haven't we? We haven't said what they mean. Uh, a TMA, <laughs> -ding, um, tutor marked assessment. I've got that right. It's not assignment, isn't it? It's assessment, is it? Tutor marked yeah. assessment. You think I'd know that as well. Um, and you get used to it. It's one of the great things about the OU acronym bingo we have so many terms and it's where you get to know you hear somebody else going like oh you're part of the OU as well I can use that term but yeah they're very important because it's, it's about engaging and as a tutor myself yeah. it's where students can come and ask questions but that you mentioned about anxiety we know that we have a lot of students who do have anxiety we have they we have students with other registered disabilities it's always a good idea to have a chat with your tutor or whoever's running the session ahead of time if you can to say you know what I'd rather you didn't actually ask me any questions in this one or I need to come along and listen I might not look like I'm engaging but honestly I am but it doesn't work but chat with you to it's part of that communication and helping now i know we've said lots and lots of things and we've been trying to pick things up but heidi i think it's probably a good time to come to you to see whether anything else has been brought up in the chat that we need to know about yeah, well, one of the key things that we're seeing, and it's really nice to see this support between um, students, are people talking about that slight apprehension about coming back to learning after a bit of a break. So that's something that we're seeing coming up. Um, so Nicola says that um, she's glad and reassured to see so many others who've taken a long break from learning. Um, Francesca says she's not been in education for about 11 years, so she's coming back to education now. 
Alexandra is on to their second degree, but the first, um, it's been over a decade since Alexandra has studied. Um, Jody had been out of education for 10 years um, before beginning studies. And, and, put a really nice reassuring message just to say everything is so easy to follow and understand with the Open University. And Richard is also returning to study after a long break and loving the induction and technology links. I was in exactly the same position. I hadn't studied for years and years. And then I, I started with the Open University and it was just the best decision that I've made. Yeah. So for all of you that are coming back to study after a bit of a break, you're definitely, definitely not alone. It takes real yeah. courage and bravery, but I assure you it was an amazing decision that you've made. Yeah, I remember that myself as well when I first did, because I was an OU student before I started working at the university. And I actually said it was my stated. I felt like my brain had atrophied and I needed something to do. And it was like, oh, and there's so much information. I, I, I don't know. Well, there might have been freshers weeks when I started 20 something years ago, but I don't remember them. But that's what's great about this. We've got these things. Thank you. Yeah. And I gather we've got, let me just check the numbers. 23% have been out of education for 10 to 20 years, 13% more than that. So brilliant that so many people are back, isn't it? So, right. So we've talked and I, I've thrown loads and loads of questions at Zoe so far. And I'm go we've also got Urte here with us today. Now, Urte is part of perhaps one of my favourite parts of the university, which is the OU Library. And the OU Library is brilliant, isn't it? There is so much there. And now students might be going, hang on a minute, we're an online, we're a distance university. Why would we even need a library? So Urte, why do we need a library? What can you offer our students? Yeah, well, hello, everybody. It's nice that you all tuned in. So the library, yes, we do have a physical library. And those of you who are close to Milton Keynes are very welcome to actually come and visit. We have got some print books, we have facilities and you can study here. But most of our resources are very much available online. So you can access that with them 24 seven. And well, we have resources for anything from databases, journal articles and journals, ebooks. Um, so quite a few different types of resources and they cover all the different disciplines and subjects that you can study in the OU. So we are quite well stocked. And in order to access the Open University Library online, you can just go to the library homepage, which is openacuk forward slash library. And that's basically your gateway to the resources. So on the homepage, you will find that we've got a discovery tool. So the discovery tool is basically the big search box that you see. And if you then try and search for something, either a particular resource, which is mentioned in your module, so you've got a reference for it and you want to search it by title. If we've got it, you can type the title in, you can also add the author surname. And um, if we've got it, it will come up then and you can directly access it full text. And you can also search for particular topics. Um, library search, the discovery tool will search across almost all the resources we have. So there are a few where you have to access the databases separately, like audiovisual material, legal and news databases, because they are not picked up so much on live research. But pretty much everything else, live research is a good gateway for it. It's easy to search. And what I would recommend you to do is have a play with it. It's very similar to Google, but obviously it accesses our resources and they will yeah. already have been quality checked and um, so and are academic in nature. And you can also sign into live research once you've got your results, sign in with your OU credentials, your username and passwords, and then you can save your searches and your search results. And you can also email your results. You can print them from there. It's quite easy to handle them and you get lots and lots of filters so you can manage the number of results as well. So I think it's quite user friendly and it's just a matter of playing with them. And there is also if you want to take it further and you want to actually go to specific databases, it means you get fewer results than using library search, but more focused on your specialism if you use subject databases. There is a section called library resources 
So that's a tab on the library website. You can click on that and then you have a whole page where library resources are sorted by type. So you get dictionaries online, you get audiovisual resources, um, uh, news sources, for example. Um, just explore and there is a special collection called Selected Resources for Your Study. And there you find, for example, if you study English, um, selected resources which are a useful starting point for studying that subject, databases, ebooks, journals. And you can just browse them and search them. So there is a lot for you. There is. <laughs> I mean, you've just given us so much information, Otia, and I'm sure people are going, oh, gosh, oh, gosh, oh, gosh, there's lots and lots and lots. I think the main thing there is, honestly, there's loads there. You th you think of a library as just a place where you can pick up a few books, but there's lots and lots. Now, we've had some people, you mentioned ebooks, and we've had, Anna wants to know, can we download books from the library? Um, my understanding Good. is there yeah. are certain books you can, but do you want to say a little bit more about that? Of course. Yeah, very good question. We get these questions actually quite a lot. So we have ebooks from different publishers and it depends on the publisher what you can do with them. So if you go into the ebook you want to read, it usually tells you when you go to the download section, um, that should usually be quite visible, whether you're allowed to download the entire ebook. Yes, sometimes you can. Sometimes it allows you to download a chapter. Um, and then it does usually printing is a chapter only. And what many of the ebooks allow you to do, particularly one particular platform which we have, is that you can always read everything online. So you just click on read online. Um, or you have done the choice of reading, downloading either a chapter. Very often it's a chapter or sometimes the entire ebook, and then you go to where you actually uh, need to go. But have a look at the ebook you want to specifically read and it will tell you how much you can download it. Great. Thank you. That's really useful. Yes. And I remember when I needed ones for my study, some of them I was able to get the whole book, some chapters, some I had to go, yes. oh, page. But then I was going, oh, which page do I want? Oh, backwards and forwards. But yes. Now, when we were talking about what we were going to go, we were going to discuss in this one, we mentioned something which is always one of my favourite parts of the university, which is about how you can access our university and other universities. Now, we know that many students who are starting out with us may actually sometimes struggle with space at home. So we do actually have something which could help you. We can't, we're not going to like come along and build you a conservatory or an attic or something, but we have something called the Sconal Access Scheme, don't we, Ute? Now, do you want to explain what that is yes. for people who have never heard of it before? Yes, of course. Um, it's actually a very popular scheme. It's a UK-wide scheme. So um, it is a, um, a, well, cooperation of different UK universities, um, which got together and said, we allow students from other universities access to our university. So that means they can, during the core opening hours, um, come in, use the study spaces, and they can also even borrow a few books. And this is, as you just said, Isabella, that's often just what students need because most of you probably won't live anywhere near Milton Keynes, our library here on campus. So, you know, you might want to try one in Scotland or wherever you live. Um, the majority of UK libraries are part of the Sconal scheme. And there is actually a link and a bit of information on Sconal. If you go to the library's help and support pages, so as a tap help and support, and then there is a link to the Sconal Access Scheme. And there you can also check whether the university library closest to you in the UK is part of the scheme. And it, it explains to you how you can apply for it. And then you can use it there. And the good thing is that you will also be able to access the internet there because there is the, the EduVome network and you will be able to use that so you can still access our OU library resources even whilst you're studying uh, even whilst you're using the physical facilities of another library so that's yeah. not bad I 
I remember doing that, but I used to get really confused, which I had to go over to Cambridge Medical School Library because it was the only place yep. that hosted a particular journal that I needed. And then I was like, actually, I don't think I use the electronic resources there, but I think I went into the University of Bedfordshire once and used their ele electronic resources. And when I've been in London before, I've wanted to just toddle into different places. But I know that I've, I've had students mention it before. It's not connected. You, you don't have to wait till the module starts, do you? You can, you can register for the Sconnell Access Scheme as soon as you're an OU student, can't you? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Thank you. And then that's, it that's tells really you helpful. also what you need to bring to the university you're going yeah. to visit, you know. Yeah. yeah. So it's quite it's quite a useful thing. So some people may be thinking, yeah. you know what, I've got a different university library near me. If I have struggle for space at home or struggle for computer access at home, I could actually book to go and study in that university library for a certain number of hours if I'm free yes I could do that and that can be really good and it's sometimes it's quite a nice thing because you can you know everybody else is studying when they're in the library and it puts you into that mind and study space and you think oh that's great so thank you Ote for that yes. I'm going to go back to Heidi now I know we've been I've picked up a few of the questions but what else have we had coming up in the chat have we had any talk about dark chocolate yet I think that's probably quite an important thing to ask we've had some mentions of white chocolate but I haven't no, seen about dark no, chocolate. No. <laughs> but you White don't want to hear that. No, 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 <laughs> I don't know. White chocolate's not real. Dark chocolate only. <laughs> so, okay. So what, what have we talked about if we haven't talked about dark chocolate? Well, what's really interesting is a few people have been sharing with us about um, who they've been sharing their their studying plans with essentially and it's quite interesting to see that a few of the students within the chat um, have been a little bit apprehensive to perhaps share their study goals um, with their friends and their families perhaps there hasn't been as much support as they would have liked um, so Julia shared that she's had some concerns about starting her law degree um, but there's been tons of support in the chat which has been really really nice to see um, Rebecca has said that only her parents and boyfriend know that she's studying um, and Alison said her plans to not really tell anyone until um, she's able to pop her graduation photo up in a few years time <laughs> and then Samantha says the same because her family's not very supportive and I think the thing that really comes out of this is to just show how important this OU community is um, and that this is a safe place that you can come to even if people externally aren't that supportive of your ambition and your goals this is the place that you can come to connect with others connect with other students and just be reminded that you're in the same boat as many others um, and yeah, just just go for it. That's the thing. You'll get this support and encouragement from those here within the, the OU community. Thank you, Heidi. I think and that, that idea, that support and encouragement, that's one of the central themes of Student Hub Live is building up community and providing support. Obviously, we have these live broadcasts. We do have online workshops as well. And if you go to our main website at studenthublive.open.ac.uk, it will give you an event calendar of all the different events that we've got coming up. In fact, I'll mention it now. We have got a social event on Friday night, which is talking about hobbies and study buddies. We will definitely be talking about dark chocolate men and various different things but we do run different things and um, there is an open university students association as well but what we're trying to do is we know that it can be quite it can be I'm not, I don't want to put words into people's places but I know when I first started I did feel quite isolated I didn't know anybody who studied with the university um, I was starting out I was studying I was working as well and I started studying I didn't tell anybody I was working with that I studied because I didn't want them to know and, and I was just thinking, oh, luckily I had support of my family, but I was just thinking, well, I don't really know. Well, I, I don't know how to find anybody else. I, I, I've no idea about that. And it's great that we've got this part of this, um, as in Student Hub Live in the community. Now, we've been talking about skills and things, and I wanted to come back to Zoe and Urte now of this idea of some digital skills. So we've been talking, and particularly I was talking with you initially, Zoe, about the skills that we need to access different things. And Urte, we, we mentioned lots and lots of the resources. Now, digital skills is, is a really important thing that students who are studying online and distance need to develop. Now, we call something quite poshly digital and information literacy skills. And essentially that means is what you do with information, how you manage information online. So, Zoe, um, could you tell us a little bit about some of the skills that um, students will develop as they're studying with the university? Yeah, sure. So, I, mean, I just want to pick up on the point about, you know, it's, it's I'm sorry that some don't feel as supported as they should be outside mm. of, of, of the OU. Um, one of the greatest things about being an OU student is you are awesome because you have to manage your own time. You have to plan and 
juggle many things. Those skills of managing your time and being organised and making the right choices for your study journey are what will make you great and attractive to any employer out there. And they're the skills that you are going to be building on. So remember I said about your module website, which, you know, it it holds your hand and it gives you advice on what you need to be doing each week. Well, it's within your gift to manage your time. If you know that next week is going to be a super busy week, you could maybe jump ahead and get a little bit more done, knowing that you're not going to be able to do it next week. In terms of digital skills, being able to navigate your way around, you know, different systems, and you two will talk more about the library um, and and, and the skills that can be built on there. But if, if we go back to how you would engage with both your tutors and students on your module, so the way that you conduct yourself, the way that you ask thoughtful and thought-provoking questions in a respectful manner, the way that you respond to your peers in a respectful way and you're kind to each other, th- again, they are skills that will see you well into your um, next chapter after your study and throughout your whole life so it's how you conduct yourself overall you know and challenging some behaviors which are are maybe not so nice Um, and the same in your tutorials as well remember that your tutorials um, again we're not like a brick university where you have lectures that's what your module website is for Um, but your tutorials are for you to go along and have those multi-person conversations and again thinking about the questions you want to ask. Um, I think, Isabella, you mentioned earlier on about Mm. ask yourself what it is that you want to get out of your study. I'd say the same with everything you're doing and how you engage with anything, whether it's the forums or the tutorials. What is it that you want to get out of it? Mm. You know, come with a positive mindset, be kind, be bold, be brave, you know, and, and make sure that you are being the best you can be. And all of those skills... A yeah, transferable. Absolutely. You mentioned that. Yes, you mentioned the word that I was waiting for, transferable skills. So digital yeah. information literacy skills are also employability. And I was talking to a student um, earlier. Well, I've talked to quite a few, but I can remember one in particular. They said they need to do a job in, uh, a job application. I said, well, the kind of skills, in, if anybody who's studying access, we do a lot of reflection on access. And that helps build into that because you can already start thinking, right, how can I say I can manage my time? Well, I got my TMA in. I got doing this. How can I say that I can actually have appropriate digital skills or I have appropriate uh, skills to communicate with other people because I've been kind? I just need to say something here. I don't want to be kind to the white chocolate army in the chat pod. Now, we've had this discussion in other things. We don't do hashtag white chocolate army. We do. We say we love dark chocolate. We don't love the white chocolate army. So that's me breaching all the regulations and not being kind. But yeah, so we've got lots of digital skills i also need to remind people because things are very very lively at the moment if you're in the chat you can pin the chat there's a little button that stops that says pin so if you thought oh crumbs it's just gone so quickly pin it and then you can look at it if you release the pin it will then carry on it's the thing these sessions are very 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 lively there's lots and lots of chat when you go to the online sessions uh, zoe mentioned earlier about tutorials having maybe 20 people if you come to our online student hub live workshops they are the biggest thing the university ones they're very very lively but they're a massive buzz and that also helps you that 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 community building now zoe you mentioned some of the skills and things and urte I know that the library also has some of the digital skills. And actually, the library is the place that sort of almost decides that we call it mapping of digital skills, don't we, to show students what they can achieve. Yes, very much so. Yeah, thank you for this. I mean, um, you are quite right, um, Zoe, as well. They are very transferable skills, these digital information literacy skills, and they can be mapped. And um, yes, they're useful, not just for successfully doing your assignments, but also later on for employability and um, yeah, for basically real life, for example, to be critical about the information you have, whether it's health information you hear on the news or anything else, it's that's 
one example of a really, really useful skill. Mm -hmm. So yes, we are mapping as librarians the digital information literacy skills that we are developing in the modules that you are studying. So we are helping the module teams to develop these skills. So um, there are five core skills which we are mapping, and that's finding information, um, it's um, engaging in being online and using that information, it's evaluating information, managing and communicating. Um, you've used, you've said few forums earlier on, for example, and then there is collaboration if you're working together on something. So, and we are trying to develop these, but not only are your modules developing these? We have also resources in the library. Do you want me to briefly outline where students can find some help and support to develop these skills? I think, yeah, themselves? very briefly, because, yeah, I think that would be yes. a good idea because lots of people, because they're new and they just go, I don't really know. But yes, if you could just, yeah. just before we do that, you might have heard me giggle in the middle of that because we've had coming in from David, is there an OU degree in chocolate studies? That's what just made me laugh. If you could. <laughs> hear me in the background there sorry but yes please as I'll try and focus if could you tell us quickly where can students find out some of that information about building their digital skills of course yeah so what is quite useful again back on the main library homepage, we have got a using the library um, tab and that goes to a page where there is one link which says services for students and under this link, um, there is something called Being Digital. So this is a collection of short guided activities that help you develop these skills, particularly useful if you haven't used these skills or you haven't done with them much. So they're very bite-sized, sometimes two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes at the most, and you can do them at your own time. Anything from, as has been mentioned before, how to best communicate online to how to find good keywords for your literature searches. So that's one way of helping yourselves but also we've got a training program which we call a generic training program in the library so there is a training and events tab on the library homepage, and if you go there you will find our different training sessions for example, how to use library search, how to reference the resources you're using, how to use databases. These kind of things are all listed there. And they're also listed with the upcoming dates for the next months or two. And you can just join the session. You don't have to even sign up to it. Um, the platform is Adobe Connect, which is the same platform you're um, tutorials with your tutors take place on and um, it's very straightforward and they're usually about 45 minutes long depending on the session. If you can't attend a session there are also recordings of these sessions, there are slides and there are extension activities so that's really useful um, to yeah to just kind of try and access as well oh and if you're in a live session you can ask the librarian some questions as yes. well and interact with good. students lovely thank exactly. you okay you, you we keep getting you lots and lots of things to say and i'm sure people are thinking this sounds like this so much don't worry there's lots of links available links have been coming in the chat i think joanne is our uh, representative from the library today so she'll have been answering mentioning specific things about the library and different things there so it's been fantastic zoe and Ute to talk to you both today lots and lots of useful information to people thank you very much for your um time today um that's what we're going to do is i'm going to talk to heidi now for a little bit and and then we're going to come back into session two where we've got our next two guests. So Heidi, what kind of things? I understand that other than the white chocolate army, which we're ignoring, we've been talking about cheese, maybe? What, what cheese? Yes, there is the mention of cheese. Richard has says that he loves the chocolate chat, but what about the cheese lovers out here? How do you feel about oh, that, Isabella? Okay. <laughs> oh no, uh, mature chocolate. Um, sorry, mature chocolate, mature cheese. Yeah, it's like, I like dark chocolate. I like mature cheese. Oh yeah, yeah. Or goat's cheese. Oh, 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 oh. oh yes, 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 yeah. yes. Sorry. <laughs> We're, we're going on to the cheese chat now, aren't we? Yes. Um, lots of great conversations, great conversations going on. Um, I, I would just like to say hello, and I really hope that I pronounce your name correctly. Um, 
Rema Philway. Um, so she's very happy to be joining us for the event today. She's a mother of two from South Africa. Um, English English is a second language. Um, and she says that she has quite basic knowledge of the internet. She's also over 40. But she said that this event has made her feel much better about her decision. So it's wonderful to have you with us. And I'm so pleased that you've been um, getting some reassurance from today and meeting everybody else. Um, Ella has been sharing. So she has autism and she had some doubts about starting a degree, um, but now says that she's feeling really excited, which is great. Um, and Alison put a really great comment in. She said, let's just all smash this. There's nothing better than showing people you can do things when they don't expect of you. So I absolutely love that one. Yeah, yeah that's fantastic. And yes, um, I always like to talk about um, the different disabilities there. I know we have quite a lot of neurodiverse students talking with the university. We will be coming on to this actually in session two, almost as if by magic. It's not that we've been ignoring that so far, but we've actually got some of the things lined up because I in, the, in session two, not that you it says session two for you, but it's from our practical perspective, I've got a different set of guests. So I've got Sally with me, I've got Matt with me, and I've got Lou, who's a student with me. Um, so we're going to be talking about some more things. So these are all people. I've, I've built them as people who know. That sounds like Zoe and um, Ute didn't know. They did. They knew as well. But this is people who've got some very, very first-hand experience. And I know that um, Matt's going to be talking about some of the disability support. And I think Lou probably will be as well. Not that I'm going to try and put in words into it. And I'm sure that Sally will as well. So there you go. So I'm going to come to Sally first. Oh, hang on. I, this is where I remember all these different things. We're going to have a word cloud coming up. So I know you've had various different widgets about where you've been in the country, how you've been feeling, using your computer, using your module website and so on. So the Word cloud we've got is going to be what's the first thing that comes to mind when you think about your OU study journey. We've mentioned study journey a bit, and I know that we're going to talk more about study journeys. Now, with the way that these Word Clouds widgets work is you have to put three answers in. If you can't think of three, you can just put a dot in for the others, and then it will go through. And it will build up. So, Sally, I will finally come to you. I kept, I kept giving you an idea I was. So your title is, and I'm going to read it quickly, is Direct to Students, which I think is hilarious. Oh, sorry, that sounds really, it doesn't mean that. I just think it sounds incredibly film-like. It sounds very exciting. What is a director of students? What do you actually do? Basically all about trying to enable the student um, journey to the to, to be the best and most successful it can be uh, for for individual students uh, and and so there's a massive amount of uh, things that go on for students uh, from the moment somebody applies to come and join us at the um, open university to the moment they graduate and indeed uh, uh, beyond uh, and and so I can't do all of that work um, by myself so I work with lots of really great folk across the at university basically to try to improve things and and I actually think it's the best job at the open university and I've done two or three jobs uh, jobs here uh, mainly because I get to spend my time uh, with students and with people who really want to support students to uh, uh, the best that we can uh, and that of uh, includes of course working with our student association uh, who are absolutely fabulous and, and represent the student body um, but but also key people across um, you know our faculties academic students is all, all over the place, uh, libraries everywhere. So it, it, it's really great. Uh, but I can hear Isabella in my ear going, what, but what does that actually mean? What does it actually mean to be director of students at the Open University? Uh, so I'm going to give you a, a flavour of the few things that um, me and my colleagues um, get up to, if that's okay, um, Isabella. Yeah, that sounds good. Well, first of all, uh, everybody talks about assessment, aren't they? It feels like the big thing um, as part of mm -hmm. the um, uh, student journey and, and, and something that uh, students quite often get quite anxious about and so within PVCS we we, um, uh, we run what's what we call the assessment program uh, that's really looking at all sorts of um, um, well, at, from all sorts of angles at assessment, at the assessment journey and at the experience that students have when they're doing their assessments. And so it's our job really to make sure uh, that we work with the faculties to ensure that assessment is fair, that it's transparent. Mm -hmm. So students really understand uh, what it is that, that is uh, required from them uh, during their assessments. Uh, and, and also to um, undertake that um, assessment with the support, that, the best support that we can give. And you've already heard about some of that. Uh, this morning from our library um, services. Um, we also um, realised 
uh, a couple of years ago, two, three, four years ago, that, that actually students are more and more wanting to study at a higher intensity. So that's about mm -hmm. make, taking more than one module at once. So we have quite a, a large um, proportion of students now uh, taking two, two modules at the same time. And so um, we've been making changes, um, um, you know, working across the organisation really to, to ensure that students get the right advice, not only about which modules fit best together, so which modules, um, um, you know, work to, to run, at, run at the same time, but also um, about uh, doing really practical things like um, developing study planners that, that look across modules to make sure that um, assessments are timed so that they don't clash. Uh, and so, so it's a... You know, it goes from very kind of policy things about you know how, how mm -hmm. many students are taking um, modules, but also to try to wriggle out the problems uh, that we can kind of um, work out, if you like, in in the systems that that we that we adopt. Um, uh, you've you've spoke to, uh, spoken already this morning, I'm sure, about um, tuition and how important it is that um, mm. uh, our students, um, uh, you know, really take advantage of their tutorials and work closely with their uh, tutors. So our wonderful um, associate uh, lecturer community, uh, alongside all the information that's within um, our module uh, websites. Um, but we know it's all not always possible to attend uh, tutorials in real time. And so we recently um, introduced a, a policy to make sure that you um, always have access to re a recorded tutorial. So, so you never miss out, um, even if uh, work or family commitments get in, get in the way of the particular timings. And so you can see we work really hard to try to be as flexible as possible um, so, you, so students can fit their study um, around their life. And I, I really want to talk a little bit also about the work that we do with the Student Association. And so one of the things that we've been doing with our wonderful colleagues in the Student Association uh, is to ensure that we get really regular feedback from students um, uh, about um, the things that uh, they are experiencing. So how they experience mm -hmm. their student journey, uh, the things that are going really well so that we can learn from that and do more of that. But also the things that, that don't feel um, quite so good. Uh, and, and actually, we welcome f uh, feedback um, uh, as much as we can. Basically, we love to hear from students students. Uh, and there are many uh, channels through which you can um, let you know what we th uh, you think, basically. So that's not only at module uh, level. So please do look out for uh, the short surveys that you get as a result of the modules that you're studying. But, but we also run events like um, Student Voice Week, which is in November, and we'll be, um, uh, we'll be talking about that, uh, <laughs> I'm sure, at yeah. some point. But do keep, keep an eye out for it, um, mm. uh, because details will be coming um, coming through about that so, so do use every opportunity to, to feedback to us and by the way also look out for the student charter uh, that's really a set of values for how our, our open university uh, community uh, works together uh, and it was written with our students so it's not not just expectations of, of students but it's expectations of how the OU will support and work with you uh, to make your student journey as successful as possible. That's, that's brilliant, Sally. Again, so you've given us lots and lots of information. Now, we, before I came to you, we introduced the word cloud. I understand that we've got lots of things. So let's, can we show the word cloud now? Ah, oh, look, oh, wow. so exciting, excitement and excited are oh, brilliant. They're all the highest ones. Fantastic. Oh, I love that. Yeah, I, I can't see chocolate. I can't see dark chocolate. There's obviously something wrong with, with the word cloud. <laughs> oh, well, never mind. But yeah, so that we, I can see nervous as well. So you mentioned that about making sure, and part of our student charter is making sure students feel ready. And, and it's great that people are excited. Now, you have mentioned a couple of times, we're not trying to be negative, absolutely not trying to be negative, but you said about putting in things in place where things sometimes I don't think these are the words you use, but it, the way I interpret it is if things don't go according to plan, mm. life changes. What happens if things get in the way of your study? What kind of things do you advise? I know you mentioned it earlier a little bit, but what kind of things have we got mm. in place, Sally? Well, certainly I find that white and dark chocolate and cheese helps, but um, joking, <laughs> joking apart, um, of course, uh, life never stays the same, does it? And our students often have families, they're often working while they study. And so the things that students uh, face during their student journey range from personal issues such as um, uh, various kind of family crises, bereavement, job changes. In fact, um, you know, if it happens in life, then it happens to our students, uh, basically. 
Uh, and at the moment, we're particularly um, concerned um, with the uh, impact of the financial uh, crisis um, on, on our students. Yeah. So, my best advice? Well, there is tons of advice and um, um, mm-hmm. guidance available through uh, Student at Home, including things like time management. And, and I know previous speakers have spoken about um, the various things that help um, you know, through the library, for example. Um, but my biggest advice to students um, would be that if something goes wrong, don't struggle alone pick up the phone. Please, please, please ring us early if you're experiencing any challenges that are interfering with your um, studies. Um, In the meantime, of course, while while all of this is going on, we're trying to really learn. So in the background, we're always trying to learn from your feedback. We look at the types of requests that that students make at institution level in terms of uh, requests for help. So we try to Um, pick up on things that we haven't thought about or put more advice and and, uh, resources, if you like, behind the things that students are most concerned about so that we can try to get um, ahead of the curve, really, for students. So to try Mm. to uh, intervene, if you like, before uh, students' uh, uh, issues become really, really um, difficult. Um, Just a couple of examples of that. Um, You know, we're we're doing a programme of work at the moment looking at digital um, inclusion. Uh, That um, involves, um, you know, uh, research that we did or or things that we learned during COVID, for example, that looks at, um, you know, the availability of kits. You know, know, how do people get online, Mm -hmm. whether their Wi-Fi is um, stable and, um, you know, whether students have um, good study space so space just to be quiet and study um in their homes or in in other places at work in libraries we mentioned the sconal sconal uh, mm-hmm. scheme just recently um we've also be, been doing a whole heap of work on financial bursaries um as well and uh, we've we've recently reviewed this and i'm sure there, there are colleagues here that are going to um uh talk about talk about the kind of bursaries that that um can help students and they're available um you know for diff- different types of um, um, need and, and our, it's it's our student support teams um, again, and also um, you know talk, going back to assessment of course, um, mm. uh, things that happen you know things happen basically when you when yeah. you think you've had time to do you know you've baked in plenty of time to do your assessment and I'd encourage you to plan and plan well, yeah. um, but but yeah. but exceptional things happen so please. Pick up the phone. Pick up the phone. Talk to us if you think you're having, yeah. uh, going to have um, um, issues to face. And 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 I keep going back to that. I've got plenty of other things to say, but if you take one thing from uh, my uh, moment on Student Hub Live this year, <laughs> please, please, please pick up the phone early. Don't let things get into big issues. Yeah. Pick up the phone. We've got plenty of people who can really give you information, advice and um, guidance um, to, that, that, that can help you. Even if it's, you know, you're rusty, you know, um, Isabella just talked about how many years people have been out of study. You know, I, I'm, I'm working in a university. I haven't studied for a number of years. I would find it difficult. Pick up the phone, yeah. get the help and advice that you need. Yeah, absolutely. And we're not saying to you, hey, we're perfect. Oh, crumbs. I'm sure Sally could no. give you all sorts of <laughs> suggestions where things have gone. And I, when I was doing my first module, and my second and my third, anything that could go wrong, that was when we didn't have an electronic submission and it was all through paper and there were strikes and the printer didn't work and I couldn't get any ink and then I couldn't get to the post office and there was all those things. So, oh, I absolutely, we, we know that kind of thing. But I will come back to you in a little bit, Sally, but I wanted to actually move Thank on you. to Matt now because Sally's been talking about picking up the phone and coming to somebody who could help. And Matt, you are Hello. one of those people, aren't you? You work for what we call our student support team. So can you explain a little bit about what that means to our students? Yeah, so uh, your student support team are here to help you if anything impacts you during your studies. Uh, we're generally quite a friendly bunch, so you know, um, you know, don't be afraid to pick up the phone and come and speak to us. Um, we can help from anything really. So there's sort of like three levels within the student support team. We can you know provide information. You know, where do I go to find this? Um, if you need like a little bit of advice, you know, what should I pick as my next mod- my next module? I'm a little bit confused. We can help with that as well. Um, and for students with more complex issues as well, we can actually offer some bespoke guidance as well from like our highest tier of support so uh, if anything does impact you during your studies then you know just get in touch and let us know 
You can also okay. use, uh, there's a link on student home, so there's your student support team. I think it's tacked onto every module and at the top and bottom of the page. <laughs> and there's a little drop down menu you can use and you can type a little message in there. So if speaking on the phone isn't your cup of tea, uh, drop us a web form. Um, if you type callback into the search bar on the main OU website, you'll find a special form to book a callback as well. So Ooh, we offer so I many different ways to, to get in touch. And if you don't want to speak to on the phone as well, just say in the email, like, can you please just email me? I'm not up to speaking on the phone. Uh, yeah will honor that request um it's often better to speak on the phone if you're feeling confident enough to do that but just uh, you know come and speak to us <laughs> yeah yeah i think that's the message isn't it now i know we've had a number of specific questions so actually a practical one in terms of the phone is there a contact number option for people outside of the uk because calling a uk number has been costing me a small fortune can you give any advice on that I don't know uh, yeah, you can. If you want to pop a request through by using the Your Student Support link on Student Home, um, you know, and ask us to give you a call, you can do that, or you can use the call back form as well. So okay. generally, if we get a web request, we'll always try and give a student a call in the first instance, unless they've requested us not to, because we want to speak to you. So we will give you a call back. So if you're worried about calling the UK, it's absolutely not a problem. We will call you. Um, if you've got a specific time as well, generally, like on the SST, if I see that you're not not in the UK, the first thing I do is to hop onto Google to see what time it is, because I don't want to be waking you up at five o'clock in the morning <laughs> or disturbing you at 10 o'clock at night. So generally, most yeah. of us will check very quickly on those times and uh, try to sort of, you know, phone within a reasonable hour as well. But if there are any times that don't work for you just include as much information when you get in touch because it really does make our job a little bit easier and we try to accommodate all requests especially with timings it's not always perfect um the student support team is almost like a living organism so if you say can you please phone me at 1 p.m um the, whoever picks up they'll put that in their calendar to phone you at 1 p.m but their phone might ring at quarter to one and the call might yeah. last 25 minutes but you'll be next on our radar so if you've requested a call at this time and it doesn't come through mm. just sit tight we're on our way yeah and that's a good thing so we're almost like the aa or other but we're on our way we're here to rescue you yes Absolutely. i think it shouldn't be a four-hour that... wait <laughs> no oh how come yeah i can't imagine that i don't think i've ever broken down like that i'll just I, oh, I have worries about that anytime i go on the motor anyway that's me going on a slide so we've had a number of practical questions which you may or may not be able to answer for us matt so jamie says he doesn't have a printer is there any way that my online study planner can be sent to me is that a um question? you can answer yeah absolutely it's not something that we would normally do you can get printed pack materials if you have a certain disability uh, we mm -hmm. offer like a lot of disability support however if you don't have a printer and you're not able to get one yourself we do have something which is accessible to all of our students which is the study related cost fund um, so we will actually fund a certain amount like on a printer um, study related materials internet access as well you can apply at the start of your module for the duration of your module when you make your application to study related costs. So um, as the cost of living crisis was mentioned, uh, you can apply for that. It is um, means tested. You have to be in receipt of a certain benefit or have a household income under a certain amount and supply supporting evidence. So for the example of like the phone bill, for example, you would say mm -hmm. you would just give them like your last month's bill so they can see what the, the monthly amount is. Uh, you don't need to send originals. It can all be done digitally. You can know, snap a picture with your smartphone or, or scan it in or whatever and just send it through. Um, but, you know, if you need some help there, like getting the printer and things like that and we don't have an official partnership with anyone, by the way. This is just a service that I've personally used. Um, HP Instant Ink um, is an absolute oh, okay. lifesaver for a student if you like physical resources. Yeah. I believe there are other ink subscription services too. Uh, but the principles of Instant Ink, um, from what it means for you as a student, is that you buy a printer that's Instant Ink compatible and you pay a monthly subscription for it. So it costs two ninety nine for. 30 pages or something per month yeah. and then they just send you ink whenever you need it and you can print up to 30 pages for 2.99 per month it's an absolute brilliant idea um and i still use it now to this day so <laughs> It's a great yeah. little money saving tip as well. You can have up to, I don't know, like a thousand page plan or something. So, uh, and of course, if you're struggling to buy the printer, you've got the funding for study related costs there as yeah. well. So, 
That's right. I think it's probably worth mentioning. Now, we did talk about whether people had printed books or online modules. We probably need to make it clear that there are some modules that are entirely online. If you have signed up for a module that is entirely online, it is expected that you do study it entirely online. As Matt said, that there's some people that do have a registered disability um, that might not be able to do things online. There's differences. But uh, we're not trying to be awkward if we say to you, sorry, we can't send you a book, but it's because if you do sign up for an online module, we can't just provide a printed thing because often they don't exist, do they, Matt? Literally, they, no. they don't, we don't have a book. <laughs> no, yeah. when you're choosing your modules, if you click onto the module description, um, about halfway down the page, it will say what's included in your module. So the, the module description will always state whether the module is delivered online and what you'll receive. So a majority of our qualifications now, uh, you will, will be delivered entirely online a few of them are supported with um with textbooks as well uh, but you know expect to spend most of your time studying online uh, if you have any problems with that as well like get in touch with us we've got like lots of you know cool tips and things like that to actually yeah. make you study more accessible if like online doesn't work for you um, there's a great little thing you can do with the module materials we provide them in epub format for example from yeah. the resources section of the module website if you download it and import it into playbooks or whatever the Apple equivalent is, iBook, sorry, uh, iPhone users, um, <laughs> you can actually enable narration <laughs> in these apps as well. So you can effectively get take your printed oh. module material, your, your digital module yeah. materials and have them read to you. So if you're driving in your car, um, you know, turn so that good, commute into a, into study time by listening to your module materials. Uh, and that's something yeah. anyone can do just by downloading the EPUBs from, from the module website. Yeah. I have to say, I, I've really got into dictating to my computer as an accessible yeah. thing for me. I like talking and it's great. I can just, I, okay, so sometimes absolutely random words come in there. And I, just, I don't know how it does that. But yeah, actually, and actually often, in all seriousness, even we're talking about studying online and, and getting tips, but there's lots of tips. Most people's computers have got accessibility things built in somewhere along the way. Um, and your student support team can give you advice. Also, your, the, the different communities can give you advice because you may well just go well somebody else has done that and actually hearing from another student to say oh well when I did this I, I actually found x useful um, or y useful and you can go yeah it's going back to this idea of the study journey managing things thinking about all the different examples so I just want to for you to clarify because you mentioned a couple of funds Matt can you just say what the names were again so people know what to look for yeah, absolutely. So um, if you pop to your help center, which is on a, on a desktop browser, just underneath the OU search bar in the top corner, when you're logged into Student Home, click help center and it will say, what are you looking for? If you just type in the study related costs into the search bar there, that will take you straight to the page that you need. It has all the information there and the application forms. Um, some things which are covered are um, study materials such as stationery, ink, printers you can get funding up to 250 pounds i believe it is towards a pc tablet or, or laptop for studies um, you can also claim for childcare costs as well so if there are any you know you know lone parents out there or people that are going to struggle with childcare because their partner is working uh, then you've got the you know we can potentially support you with childcare costs as well there so um, all the information is contained on that page so it's worth having a look through but if you if you're in any doubt at all about whether you'd be eligible or not um, I would say get in touch with the student support team in the first instance or, or give us a call. Um, I believe sometimes well, there's a little bit of confusion about some students that might be like on benefits and in receipt of income, but I believe that it's just usually the benefit that is looked at first of all. So there is a list of qualifying benefits on the student home. And if you're in receipt of one of them, then you should be eligible to apply for the study related costs. So you can download Thank the you, application Matt. form. It's all online. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah, I mean, because there's so much what we've, what, I think probably the message you all have been getting so far today from everybody is there's lots and lots of support there. There's lots of information there. Have a little explore, have a little look through and there's lots of things. Now, I, I realise I haven't come to Heidi. Heidi, I haven't come to you for ages. I'm going to come to Lou after I've spoken to Heidi. Lou is a student that's um, studying with the own university. But Heidi, what other things have we been chatting at? Have there been any questions that we haven't managed to cover so far? 
There's certainly been comments about when people are squeezing in their study. And that's something that I am very familiar with. When I was doing my study, I personally used to find that I was most productive first thing in the morning. So I used to set my alarm for five and try and get about an hour and a half in before the family woke up. Now, I know that a lot of people don't like that. And that doesn't work for some, which is fair enough. So Alison um, said the great thing about the OU, of course, is that we can log on at any time in the middle of the night if we so choose, if we can't sleep. And that sort of flexibility is amazing amazing to have. Um, And then Jessica also said that she is much more productive during the evening and at night time. So another night owl there that that prefers to study then. Um, And then Sean has been studying when the kids are in bed and when the little one has a nap. And again, I can relate to that, trying to squeeze in that study. I started when my son was about nine months old. Squeeze it in when he's having his nap in the daytime. Um, Just any available opportunity that you have. So lots of people fitting in around kids as well. Brilliant. Thank you, Heidi. And I think, again, that's a message. We've been talking about the study journey. I said I'd bang on about the study journey quite a lot in the nicest possible way. But some of that is working out what's going to work with you. The 24-7 aspect is actually really important. And that's one of the things that's probably quite different from Brit universities. And a massive strength that we have is that you can study when suits you. You can study in the middle of the night. Now, I wanted to come to Lou next. Now, Lou happens to be a student that you, I used to be responsible. She was in one of my tutor groups earlier. <laughs> and she actually agreed to talk to me, which is brilliant. So, Lou, you are in your level two study now. Can you remember back to when you were first starting out and what kind of things either you wish you'd have known or how you were feeling at that time? Um, Well, like the word cloud, excited, nervous. Um, uh, Yeah, there's a lot of those words, the word cloud really resonated. So um, the things that I wish I had thought about straight away were things like uh, dedicated study space. Now, I've now got a desk, which is great. But when I started, everything was, but it was all together. So that was really, really useful. And I'm getting a little uh, bit of breaking up of you. Oh, the secret. I I heard the secret chocolate stash, but you were breaking up a little bit for me, Lou. So I didn't hear everything. So I think what you said is, did you say you had everything together to begin with? That was where it just broke up for me. Yeah. So I think if I remember right. Yeah. Keep everything together. Yeah. Did it, was that like in a in a in a box or on a particular place? Yeah. Yeah, I had a, just just a box like this and right. I literally kept all of my study materials together and it meant I could take that wherever I needed to go to study. Um if it was the living room, if it was the kitchen, um just whatever was comfortable. Um, yeah. I now have my Sconal access card so I can Ooh, go off to fab. a library at uh, one of the universities and study there now as well. So that's that's handy to have. Yeah. And I, I actually think we've we've mentioned, and in all seriousness, we've mentioned, Sally mentioned the cost of living crisis earlier and, and Matt mentioned some of those things. And I, I don't want to put words into people's mouths, but you know what? If it was me, I would be making use of the Sconal Access Scheme. And I would be camping out in, in a university library study <laughs> this winter because I'd be going, I could heat my home home or I could go and heat. And just to be around other people. Did you ever study around other people, Lou? Did you did you manage to do that? I, I did. And you know what? I actually find myself more productive and I got better scores on my TMEs when I had an a dedicated study space um, right. at, at a college or a university and mm-hmm. just being around other students it, it's, it was really good it was, a, yeah. an, it was the, part of the experience as well of being a student despite the fact we're meant to be distance learned it's nice to be around other students studying yeah, absolutely. Now, I know when we've talked about it before, Lou, you, you, meant, you mentioned the secret st- st- secrets. I can't say it. Secret, the secret stash. stash. <laughs> That's it. That's the word. I just can't say these things. It's alliteration. It don't yes. work. Oh, <laughs> so it's not so secret. You show, oh, you've My, got two, two parts. Of I know. Stuff. Excellent. I've got two. Okay, yes. <laughs> Now, I know from speaking yeah. to you before that you have a very naughty study buddy in the, um, I think he must be um, shut away today because Max tends to help Max. you in the <laughs> commerce, doesn't he? <laughs> yes, well, one of the things I 
I done for my um, first year, I decided that I was going to reward myself um, if I passed my module. And I I got distinction and I was so thrilled. So I got myself a a no you hoodie and a no you baseball cap. And Max Max has Oh you be ready for chewing on. So Max has now been banned from the study. I can imagine. Oh naughty Max, naughty Max. I know. I know, oh dear. but that's but, another good so, thing is setting a reward for yourself absolutely. for getting to the yeah, end of no, your module. I am a firm proponent of rewards. People might have worked that one out. My reward often being cho- dark chocolate related. Chocolate. But I think that's a great <laughs> idea. So actually, it's a question. Out. We've given you various widgets and things, but we've got a question. What rewards are you looking for? It might be it's an actual an edible reward or it might be like Lou says, you're looking forward to buying yourself that OU hoodie or that OU cap or something. Um, so I'm just going to go to I'm, I'll be come back to you in a little while, um, Lou. But I know we've got a few questions from Heidi, including um, uh, something about a physical ID badge. What was that question, Heidi? Yep, absolutely. So that's from um, Seema. I do hope that I've pronounced your name correctly. So is there a way of getting a physical ID badge? Um, Would Seema need to come down to the university and get registered for one? Um, So that's one of the questions that we've got coming in. And it's not a silly question at all, Seema. No question is a silly question. No, not at all. Now, I'm trying to think whether anybody here... Oh, are you waving something, Lou? Are you saying... You, oh, Lou's got one. Yes. Oh, I, yeah, of course. Yes. <laughs> there is a student's association... A student, some but Yes, Lou. Fab. Do you want to tell us about that, Yes. Lou? So the National Union of Students um, have the TOSUM card. So it's basically a student ID. You can get a digital one on your phone um, or you get a physical card that will get you all your student uh, discounts um, in the various places round about that do student yep. discounts. Fantastic. Um, um, Matt, Matt's waving at me, so I think Matt wants to add something here as well, Matt. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. There's a also a link on Student Home um, to your Open University email address, which will enable you to set up an OU email address through Microsoft. Um, do go ahead and do that because it actually also opens some more doors for you online as well. Student Beans uh, discount website will enable you to um, it will validate your study through your OU email address. Uh, Amazon Prime Student will use your OU email address. You can also log in um, through the OU's partnership with many uh, institutions across across the world, really. Uh, for the first one that jumps to my mind from my own studies is I can log in to New Scientist and read their subscriber-only content uh-huh. using my OU login. So there is so much that your OU email address will unlock uh, and doesn't yeah. usually cost you a penny to do as, as, as well, but the totem card is good if you do need that physical ID as well. But yeah. get that OU email address set up. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And that, that's really useful because there's all sorts of things. Because we've got our Freshers' Week and we're doing that at the moment, Brick Universities, they're coming into their Freshers' Week. So as a little aside, Lou mentioned the discounts. You will probably see a number of high street, uh, what do we call them? We're, are we allowed to mention them? Places like Boots and Superdrug, they get a, a, a boosted uh, discount as we're coming up to Freshers' Week. Places like Ryman's, I think, do. Uh, co-op... Um, other supermarkets are available, but Co-op gives you a discount and has very, very nice 85% dark chocolate, which is where I go quite regularly. Uh, but yeah, there's all sorts of things like that. And I think Pete has put us a, put us a link in the chat so you can follow that up as well, as well as looking at where Matt mentioned. Oh, and Waterstones have a student discount as a lifesaver, says Rachel, who wants us to make sure know about that. I think I, I don't have space for books, unfortunately, so I don't know any. Now, I just wanted, and again, it's not, not in any sort of too serious way, but Lou, I hope you don't mind me mentioning, I know because you were one of my students that you you actually had to avail yourself of a number of the support activities like Matt was talking about in terms of disability related and flexibility. Now, can you tell us a little bit as a student how that actually helped you? So by having a dedicated team there to deal with student disabilities or, or students with disabilities, they are, can help you work around issues that you might you might not see what the answer could be, but they've got the experience to aid you in the right direction. And 
one of the, the biggest things I can say is if you need help, reach out as soon. The minute you think, mm-hmm. I need help with this, reach out as soon as you can because they are really good. They are always come up with a resolution somehow. Um, yeah. And that would go the same for things for with your tutor, um, for assignments. If you think that, so I have chronic pain flare-ups. Um, in fact, in December, I had a, a TIA and I had to reach out to Isabella to say, could I please have an extension on my payment because I've um, I've had a, a mini stroke. Um, and doing that as soon as you can means that you can still get your work in on time and that you will get that support there to say, well, is it else that you need that to um you know have additional module materials sent out or do you want me to send you the powerpoints for the slides that we have on the the tutorials little things like that just make it a big difference yeah absolutely thank you lou and i think i remember that because i remember thinking oh i don't as a tutor, I, I can't I can't solve uh, things. I, I can't. Um, I'm sorry. Sometimes I might sound like I know the answers, but like Sally and I were saying earlier, we, we know lots of things. And Matt was saying, we know some answers. We can't solve everything, but we can try and point you to places. We'll do as much as we can. We can't always solve everything, but we will do a number of things. Now, I know, Heidi, there's been a number more things coming up in the chat. What Have there been any other specific questions that people wanted answering or anything that they wanted to share? Well, we're having, um, yeah, lots of conversations about chocolate again, actually, that one's been coming up. Um, But also people talking about various different things in the chat. Um, David did put a great comment, which I think you're going to like, Isabella, where he said, so uh, if the OU made chocolate, would it be choc-o-u-let? Which I thought was quite funny. So I thought I would share that one. That was very good, David. We really liked that one. So thank you. Yeah. So lots of other people then going on to talk about their love of chocolate. And then just um, a couple of people popping in there about um, talking about um, rewards that they give themselves. So obviously Lou was just talking about rewards then. Fantastic fantastic idea. Um, love that. So um, Francesca says, when she finishes um, a TMA, massive bar of chocolate, again, back onto the chocolate theme. And then yep. um, Sabina says, champagne will do. Very, very well Ooh. deserved. That feeling when you get your TMA in, oh my goodness, yep. when you put all of that work in and you get it submitted, it's the best feeling in the world. So I love the reward system. I think that's a fantastic idea. Yeah. Yeah. I also... I like, I know, I mean, I know I like chocolate, but I actually like the fresh air reward of the, you know what, I've been sat in front of a computer all this time. I can now release myself to go outside. Hopefully it's not rainy, but even if it is, just going outside, getting some fresh air. For me, that always really helps me to refocus as well, because fresh air makes a big difference to me being outside. And I think a number of people who have struggles with their mental health, often they'll find if they can get outside, for even for a little point in the day, that can actually really help. So I wanted to come back to you, Sally. We've talked a little bit. We've only got a few minutes left of the show, but we've talked a bit about disability support. And you said that we we ask students and things. Is there anything else you can share from from your position, your experiences of what we try to do to make things easier for our students who have got disabilities? Mm, Certainly. Um, So. The most important thing for students uh, with disabilities to do is to let us know early on in their journey with us um, that um, uh, they they um, have a disability uh, because then we can uh, put them uh, basically through to the right people. So we have education advisors and all sorts of different people, um, d- uh, disability support advisors that would be able to get them to the, the, the right um uh, support basically so that might be f- um, all sorts of kind of um, digital um, uh, solutions uh, you know for things like dyslexia and all, all sorts of right the way through to um, students who need to have some of their module materials printed out and, and, and sent out to them so again it comes back to that um, solution really for me which is um, um, you know if you have a need that you haven't discussed um, with us at the Open University please do pick up the phone um, and, and talk to us about it because if we don't know that you're struggling with a particular thing um, then we can't help you um, um, with that and, and you know we have um, 
uh, I mean, there's 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 a, a whole heap of things that we can do. We, you know, we we um, you know have students who are blind, we have students who are deaf. We you know have all sorts of solutions um, that 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 we can help students with. So whatever your particular um, um, challenges, then please do get in touch and, and and talk 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 to us about that. Yeah, and I think I wanted to mention because I remember some, this was something that used to confuse me. We don't use the term disability in any kind of derogatory way. It's actually no. a legal term, isn't it, that we have to use? Am I correct in my understanding about that? It's it's a term that that you, all universities refer to them as disabilities. Is that correct? Um, we tend not to. Um... Uh, describe um, people ha as disabled, if you like. Mm -hmm. We talk about people with a particular disability or a, di yes. a particular challenge. Um, so, so, and and uh, at, the, at the Open University, we see it as our job to enable students with those various challenges um, to, um, uh, uh, you know, come to us, and we will we will uh, try to help them. Basic, basically, we'll 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 solve those uh, challenges. So, so um, we don't we don't tend to label um, yeah. uh, an individual as disabled, if you like. We, it's for us yeah. as an organisation to be able to um, put solutions in, so so that um, students, yeah. regardless of um, um, you know their their their, um, their various status, you know, we, we will be able to um, resolve those um, issues so that they can study just just like anyone else, really. Yeah. It's about access, really. So it's not about labelling, because I know it, I've spoken to students before, and they say, I, I, I don't consider myself disabled, but that's what you're saying. It's not actually about exactly. being disabled. It's There's something that is challenging your ability, perhaps, to study in the way that you might like to study if this challenge wasn't yeah. there. And Absolutely. I we're we almost that... Sorry. We have a Oof, massive sorry. proportion of our students um, um, yeah. do come to us um, with a disability of all sorts of different um, um, uh, natures. So, so, so we're really, you know, we we, we um, have put a lot of resource really into making sure that mm. that regardless of anything that is getting the, in in the way of accessing higher education study, if you like, so yeah. accessing studies, we'll work with you basically to put to put those um, right. Yeah. So it's it's about making sure that study journey we were talking about as effective mm -hmm. as possible. We can't necessarily solve things. We can't sadly provide you a chocolate subscription to make you feel better. We can't make you <laughs> somebody able to run, which I can't. Um, I don't. I lumber. Well, I don't. I don't like running unless I absolutely have to to get somewhere. But we are out of time today, I'm afraid. So it's been absolutely fantastic. So thank you for my to my guests Ute and Zoe earlier, and thank you to Sally, Matt, and Lou today. And there's some special thank you for Heidi on our chat desk today is there just a last little word that you need wanted to share with us Heidi before the end yeah just to say it's fantastic in the chat today it's just been so wonderful to have so many people join us and best of luck to everybody on your your study adventures and your journeys ahead it is like I said the best decision you've ever made Brilliant. Thank you, Heidi. Yes. So we will be, and I can see <laughs> Sally's just sneaking some emergency chocolate there. I won't get the camera to go to you, Sally, but I can see that. I can't have any near. Yeah. But thank you, everybody, for your time today. Thank you to everybody that's been watching today. So this is our first session. We've got another session at 11 o'clock on Thursday. We'll be talking about becoming a confident academic learner and another session on Friday evening, the, the social session. But hopefully this has given you a great introduction to the university. You've made that brilliant decision that we were just talking about. And thank you for joining us today.